Could I get a motion to adopt the resolution? I'll make that motion. I'll second that. Well, 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 well not. <laughs> let, me read, let me read them first. Oh, okay. <laughs> So resolution for awarding contract leading to continuing contract rights or tenure. Whereas Carla Olson Line, Sarah Wendt, Layla Renberg has served the required number of years of operational teaching as prescribed by MS 122A.40. And whereas Carla Olson Line, Sarah Wendt, and Layla Renberg have successfully met the instructional and professional standards of ISD 361, International Falls Public Schools, as determined by the immediate supervisor, Tim Everson. Hmm? I'm lost the tape, sorry. Sorry, I have notes on here. <laughs> Whereas Tim Everson, Principal, and Melissa K. Principal, and Kevin Grover, Superintendent, now recommend Carla Olson Line, Sarah Wendt, and Lola Renberg the school board to the faculty tenure, be it resolved that Carla Olson line upon recommendation of the administration be granted faculty tenure to the extent of 0.727 FPE, and Sarah Wendt upon recommendation of the administration be granted faculty tenure to the extent of 1.0 FPE, and Layla Renberg be recommended upon the administration be granted faculty tenure to the extent of 1.0 FPE, with all its privileges and responsibilities effective the 2018-2019 school year. The motion for the adoption of the board resolution is seconded by Mike Holder. <laughs> <laughs> and we will have a uh, junior roll call. Roll call. Just, okay, so roll call vote, Mike Holden. Yes. 24 p. Yes. Terry Murray. Yes. Roxanne Goldstead Beach. Yes. Michelle Hebner, yes. Heather McBride, yes. Ted Saxton, yes. All voted for and none against, whereupon said resolution was declared duly passed and adopted. And I'm going to call each of you guys up here for your plaques. And we'll go Carla also line, please. meeting minutes for the regular school board meeting of April 16, 2018 and special board meeting of April 23, 2018. Item 2, approved current accounts payable due in amounts of $1,000,490.74. Approved payroll in amount of $387,250.65 for pay periods April 27, 2018 to May 11, 2018. Item 4, receive p &I grant update report on Cape activities. That's just written. Is there no uh, Five, approve auditor services agreement with Clifton Larson Allen for the June 30th, 2018 financial audit. Item six, approve hire of Ashley Goff as head girls swimming coach for the 2018 2019 season, contingent upon receiving head coaching certificate. Item seven, approve hire of the following assistant football coaches for the 2018 2019 season Jared Koschik, Shel Fogelberg, and Seth Edison. Item 8, approved hire of Cheryl Henderson as assistant cross-country coach for the 2018-19 season. 
a pro prior of Dana Lawrenson as the volleyball coach for the chosen 18 close and 18 season. Item 10, accept the resignation of Ben Everson as a summer college worker effective immediately. Item 11, accept the resignation of Lexi Erickson as summer college worker effective immediately. Item 12, approve hire of the following summer college workers, Emma Meisner and Owen Amundsen. Item 13, approve hire of Carlo Olson Line as Minnesota Honor Society Advisor of chosen 1819 school year. Item 14, approve resignation due to retirement from Patty Jackson, FHS head cook effective June 1st, 2018. Item 15, approve hire of Carlo Olson Line as District Nutrition Director effective July 1st, 2018 with required training of up to 140 hours to begin upon formal hiring. Wage and benefits at her, her at will position employment schedule. Item 16, approve hire of Casey Stenberg as Technology Assistant effective June 1st, 2018. Wage and benefits for the at will position employment schedule. Item 17, accept resignation from Cynthia Warren as being my grant youth leader, effective May 4th, 2018. Accept resignation from Ryan Punchakar, social studies teacher, effective June 30th, 2018. Item 19, accept resignation due to retirement from Elizabeth Ingerson, paraprofessional, effective May 31st, 2018. Item 20, approve hire of Katie Morrison as paraprofessional, effective April 24th, 2018. Item 21, approve hire of Shauna Thorson as paraprofessional effective April 26, 2018. Item 22, approved hire of Ashley Goff as paraprofessional effective April 30th, 2018. Item 23, approved hire of Ted Pago as paraprofessional effective May 14, 2018. Item 24, award bid for Falls Elementary Playground grinding and resurfacing to Bowman Asphalt Products at the bid price of $110,000. Item 25, award bid for Phase 1 Corridor Ceiling Project to K K Myers at bid price of $49,490. Item 26, award bid for phase 21 quarter lighting project to Cantor Electric at bid price of $45,764. Item 27, approve addition to phase one FHS ceiling project for band room, choir room, and library at cost of $28,928 to K K Myers. Item 28, approve addition of phase one FHS lighting project to, for band room, choir room, and library at cost of $17,798 to Camp for Electric. Item 29, award bid for phase one quarter light removal to Abate Tech, Inc. at price of $13,200. Item 30, award FHS and Wee Locker Refurbishing Project to Splash Equipment Company, LLC, at cost of $44,198.99. Item 31, receive radon testing report from IEA. Item 32, approve the concurrent enrollment agreement with Bemidji State University for the chosen 18-2019 school year. <coughs> Item 33, approve English textbook adoption for 2018-2019 a cost of $78,491.93. Item 34, approve lease agreement with citizens for Baptist AB effective August 1st, 2018 to July 31st, 2019. Item 35, receive final 2018, 2017, 2018 revenue and expense budgets for approval on June 18, 2018. Item 36, receive revised adopted 2018, 2019 revenue and expense budgets for adoption on June 18, 2018. Item 37, acknowledge Glenn Marcotte as volunteer softball coach for the chosen 17, 18 season. Item 38, accept resignation due to retirement of Tamara Kennedy, choir teacher effective June 30, 2018. Item 39, accept resignation due to retirement from Barb Johnson, Secretary, effective May 31st, 2018. Could I have a motion to accept? I'll make that. As presented. I'll second. Any further discussion? If I could just make a few comments, please. Um, first of all, um, just for your information on number five, the audit, um, it was 19400 last year, went to 19650 so very really acceptable. Um, I would take a chance, and I'm not going to name everyone, um, to thank those uh, that are retiring as well as resigning. For whatever reason, leaving the district, um, thank you for your service. We have um, a head cook, we have Paris, we have um, secretary, as well as welcome on board. Some of the Paris that you see hired there are filling some positions that we've had for a while, as well as we've had um, some new positions come in and have so that's where those are coming from. But welcome aboard the new people, as well as thank you to um, years of service for those people leading us. Um, just so you're on board with the construction projects, for the most part, um, if you recall, 
recall on the 10 year plan that we had technically this building to be done this year and the elementary to do next year. What happened though is when they were bidding it, the group was afraid um, they couldn't do this whole building and allow our staff to get it cleaned because we're going to clean it and put things out in the hallway. So, what we did is we're still going to do it in two years, but there's some being done here, some being done over there, and vice versa. Um, so, it is all going to get done. We're still under budget, but there's only so much they can pack a lot of time, and that's kind of where we kept adding the van room and so on, trying to get as much in as we can. So, that's good. Um, the Bacchus renewal, 2% uh, is in contract, so that's I think, very acceptable. Um, That's all I have. Unless someone has questions. Any questions? Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All Aye. opposed? Motion carried. Action items. Item one, resolutions for acceptance of gifts and donations. I'll read the resolution. Whereas school board policy 706 establishes the guidelines for the acceptance of gifts or donations to district, whereas the International Falls School District Board encourages the support of the district's educational programs through gifts or donations that meet the goals and objectives of the school board. Whereas Minnesota Statute 465.03 states the school board may accept a gift, grant, or device of real or personal property only by the adoption of a resolution approved by two thirds of its members. Therefore, be resolved, the School Board of International Falls Public Schools, ISD 361, accepts with appreciation the following gifts, donations, or grants received by the school district. Bronco football boosters for Huddle Soccer, $81.78. Cary Park Hockey Tournament for 18-19 volunteer hockey coach, $3,500. Bronco Track Boosters for 17-18 volunteer coach, $2,500. Anthony Kern Bronco Hall of Fame, $200. PCA International Falls Mill to Community Education Programs, $500. Could I get a motion to accept the gifts and donations? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. And. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Item two, approve four days of unpaid leave for Alex Manasa for child care leave to be used in December 2018, the 2018-19 school year. Could I have a motion? So Second. Okay. Discussion? Um, I will just comment, it, it works out um, first and has some leave, and these four days will extend it so that she comes back following Christmas break, so I can do some important. Okay, any further discussion questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Item three, approve superintendent contract with Kevin Grover effective July 1st, 2018, ending June 30th, 2021. Do I have a motion? So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? Everyone should have gotten a copy of the contract. I just want to say thank you to Kevin for continuing more years of good service with us. Yeah, I, me too. I, um, I've been on here six years now and been a great superintendent and um, led by example. So keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Item four, add afternoon section of preschool. Could I have a motion? Make that motion. Second. Second. Discussion? I will make some comments. Um, and if anyone didn't get a set up a copy here of an uh, email from Mrs. State, um, we have filled up for the most part with additional four year olds. And um, we could fit them in the, the five spots remaining. Um, but we know we'll get three year olds. And that's the piece we've talked about why we've got more four year olds. We're not quite sure, but it, it, it's a good thing, obviously. So the recommendation is to add back that afternoon section that we reuse. We are um, we have gotten some positive information on being able to access some pathway grants. So I can't tell you exactly how much it's going to cost, um, which we weren't. Um, I'm going to say the state doesn't know where we should be able to get North Mountain Foundation that administers them. Um, we've been told no we're going to the state after some more discussion. Concluded that we will be able to access the 
Texas, so um, we're going to work to try and get families to qualify and get them, you know, enrolled. That should help with some of the cost. Is it going to pay for the whole thing? I'm not saying that. It, it, you know, but it will help us somewhat. So along with that, a person will be called out of that. So next month, you will have a you know, increase of a, a callback for a title position um, that will be coming to you. So um, I support, and we will still have some spots open for those three-year-olds that way with when they come mid-year, because they will get student degree and body training and preschool. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Item 5, approve amending 2018-2019 school calendar with adding August 27, 2018 as a teacher in service day and changing March 15, 2019 to a no school day. Could I have a motion? I'll make that motion. A second? I'll second. Discussion? Just so the board's on, on track, the, the reason for adding the 27th, that is a specific, we need another day for LSI training. And so we're, we're maxed out, you know, on the calendar that was adopted. Um, and so I'm going to say similar to what we did, you know, years back when we made the Pew Comp. There was a year or two that we added, you know, a day or two. And so that's what I'm asking for here is to add the 27th. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday as in service days. Have a longer weekend. And then we have to take a day out. So I picked, I think, March 15th, trying to break up March if you look at it there. Um, and so that's what we're, we're asking for. Okay, any further discussion? Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Discussion items. Item one, discuss award criteria with regards to graduate honors, honor roll, academic excellence award, and weighted grading and possible action. And everyone should have seen the notes. So I send the workbook. I can, so I send a um, piece to you um, that had, that looked like this. I told you I'd reach out to various schools. These are the ones that have responded. Um, as you look through, there are, um, you know, there's similarities, there's differences. Um, and then I also emailed, and I think it's attached, is this document that kind of explains, because I got, um, it, it is confusing, the, the different programs that we have. Um, we have our honor roll, which has a principal's list, A honor roll, B honor roll. So that's, you know, one piece. The Academic Excellence Award, which was given out last week or so long, is a program where they fill out a form such as this. They need to get a total of 300 points to qualify. It's for 9th through 12th grade. And there is a very, you know, similar, or, or there's a, a graduated scale, if you will, on where the cutoff is. Um, had written down and, and I spoke I misplaced it. If you recall what you saw in the pictures, um, ninth grade there were, I think if my memory serves me right, close to 20 kids. Um, tenth grade, a few less, but in the same ballpark. Juniors so there were 13, 14, somewhere in there, and there were I think about 10 seniors that qualified. Um, you know, when it was all said and done. And I guess that's all. Oh, no, I listed it on. I'm sorry, 8 seniors, 13 juniors, 18 sophomores, 15 freshmen. That's my memory. I'm <coughs> off, but not too bad. Then we have another piece. The graduating with honors is separate as well. That um, cumulative GPA of 3.95 or higher. So now keep in mind that has none of the service requirements or the attendance, you know, that um, the uh, academic excellence award does. And then um, the last thing is the weighted grade discussion that comes in. We wait at a 0.5 to be um, honors class, concurrent enrollment class, advanced placement class, taught by our instructors for a grade of A through C. Okay. Um, gave you an example there, like physics. The person got an A, they actually had 4.5 instead of 4.0. Over time, that means the 10th, 11th, 12th graders can get higher than a 4.0. That's why. Past we raised um, the bar, if you will, um, last year. The encounter go back and find out we have roughly 20 plus kids graduating with honors out of 80 kids. You know, the question is where do you want, what percent do you want graduated with honors? Obviously, it's not going to be the same every year. Um, we went back, and I'm just going to see if I have it here. Um, this year, and I'm just giving you right now. Administrators and pull some numbers. Um, 
we would have 10 kids out of 100, 101, that would make the graduate from the Congress, okay, without seven. If we changed it for some reason to 375, 37, obviously that changes it. Right now, again, at this point, um, 375 would be 26 out of 101, so roughly 25%. If 37 is 28 out of 101. So again, the question that comes back for us as a group is, um, again, if you look on that sheet, we're similar to some places. Now, ours is higher because we have weight. There's only three or four on there that are doing weighted grades. Um, but I guess it comes down to me, the discussion is, what do we want for um, the different awards? You know, what, what are people's thought? There isn't a right or wrong answer. Um, I will be honest, and I mentioned to a couple board members, I'm not in favor of giving everyone a grip. And, you know, everyone who graduates has done excellent. You know, they've earned what we want to earn. Just like the honorable AB presence list, someone not on the honorable doesn't mean they're not doing excellent work doing everything, you know, working above their ability. You know what I'm saying? It's just, but everyone doesn't get on the AD honorable the presence list. But that's the discussion, you know, with the group that presented, and, and, and again, um, I think there were a little mis maybe conceptions on some of what they were talking about, what they were asking for. Um, you know, they, they, I felt it was necessary to lay out the programs that we have. I don't have an answer for you. I believe the one thing I do believe is um, it's tough. Anything can be changed in time, obviously. But to change it now, when people, you know, this way it's been laid out, the group would have came, you know, first month of school and said, hey, we have a concern with it. Okay, I think, you know, maybe it would have been a different discussion. If you recall last year at this time, when we found out we had not updated the book, because this had changed two years ago. Up on the standard, we didn't change it, and that's why we let 20 plus kids graduate with honors. This, it was our fault, it wasn't in the handbook, we didn't feel it was fair. People we were working under those criteria. Um, but it, it's, it's the will of the board if you want to do something or not do something, you know, for now or later. Um, I guess my take, I want to see, and I guess it's my opinion, you know, graduating with honors should be looking at a higher standard of some sort. The rest of the graduates, great job, but you know, somewhere we have to make our own determination whether it's here or somewhere else. What percent do you want to be? We'll come up with a number, and it'll fluctuate a little bit. But is it 10 percent? Is it 20? Is it 50 percent? What do you want graduating with honors? Or some of the other places do two or three levels. You know, we can do something different now. Graduating with honors, get a gold cord. Graduating with you know, some other name, you want to go down. I mean, there's a variety of things that can be done, you know, if we want to recognize more people, or you can just drop it down, or you can leave the same, or that's where we're at. So, to the group that presented, when you clarified the actual different categories that were under discussion, which may have been mixed match, what were they really asking? Well, my assumption was the graduate. You, you know, and obviously our academic excellent award, you know, goes through those same criteria as far as grade points. So they're not against that being changed, but there is an additional piece to that: the service, the attendance. They weren't, you know, that wasn't their concern. Um, well, I would say to be consistent with the fairness that we chose last year, going with what was printed in the handbook. That at this point in time, you know, two weeks before graduation, you shouldn't be changing the rules because it was printed in the handbook. And if that's what we went by before. I mean, my stance would be if something was completely wrong, I would advise the board to change it. You know what I'm saying? If I knew we were wrong, we would correct the minute. You know what I'm saying? If we know it's wrong. This, this is not necessarily wrong. You may have no opinion that it's too high, too low, mm -hmm. you know, but it's not. It's, not it's our wrong. current standard. It's not wrong. It's yeah. in and writing. That's where I. The weighted grading, again, I will go on the record, I'm, I'm behind the weighted grading for the classes that we have. We're trying to keep our, you know, the kids here. Some agree with that, some don't agree with that. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I may, the only uh, problem I see, well, not the only problem, the major problem I see with this, the way that we have it now is we're saying um, 10 kids um, will graduate if we keep it the way it is. 
26 will graduate um, if we change to 3.75, and that might be too low too. Um, but what you do have is what happens when you run into a situation, and this is a hypothetical, where let's say 50% of the class make that 3.95, it's not gonna happen, but the numbers are gonna fluctuate mm -hmm. up and down, correct? So if we're looking at a percentage of kids that are being awarded this, um, it seems unfair when you would have to adjust you know, the cutoff, so I, to speak. I'm not so, saying adjust. I'm just saying we, we did that to see you know, roughly what percent is. Yeah, you could have an academically stronger class. So that's why I think it. I think it. Uh, I think it hurts an academically stronger class. Um, I think 3.95 is pretty uh, high as it is. I mean, I get the weighted grades and everything. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I don't have a recommendation for the right number, but I could just see um, just based on the stats of it how it could be really skewed and you could hurt a kid. Um, so what? What about the guy, kid who's 3.94 that would make it number 11? You know, it's kind of. But what Stop. happens at three seven five and run into that or three point eight? You know, kids. No, I, I get, I get, it, I get the other side of the, the argument, and both sides make sense, and that's the problem, I guess. Um, that if we're if we're doing it to keep uh, less kids from getting it because it's more prestigious that way, I kind of see a problem with that too. So that's my two cents. And again, I'm not suggesting one hundred percent. We need to have a number. You know, and yeah, there'll be 15 kids one year, 14 the next. The, you know, it's going to fluctuate based on ability, and that's fine. But again, going back, we can look back one, two, three years, you know, and find a number as long as we've got a weighted grading that was roughly we did 395, 39. But it's coming down to the feeling of the board. Do you want 25% roughly? You know, to graduate with an Do you want 10%? What's the you know, what like is it? <laughs> I'd like 100 percent. Graduating, I agree. No, with honors, well, ideally. Then let's give it a little room. You know, that's uh, no. I mean, hurting. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. But I, w I guess I would like to add. I don't think that it was looked at as uh, we're looking to get 10 seniors or 26 seniors. I think it was first you picked the uh, GPA number and then you said so how many would that be I don't think we're looking at saying oh we only want 10 kids to get it we're just saying if we have this this is about how many we'll get it this year but that would stay in fact yes no I, I'm with you and the only reason we pulled the numbers was you know to, to give you an idea of how many kids it was being because I guess when I look at it it's kind of like lettering We've changed our lettering criteria over the year for different sports. You know, the boys swimming six in my mind a few years back came with a recommendation because pretty much every kid was lettering because the number of participants has gotten smaller and it had criteria if you're in the top 25 in this event in the section, I think it was. Well, there weren't 25 kids in the section, so every kid was getting, you know, a letter and they, you know, that's not what they want. They want kids to achieve it. But you want it to, uh, you know, have to work at it. Yeah. Now, other schools, some schools we make our student that. You know, everyone has, you know, different philosophies on it. You know, and so same thing here. One thing, I guess, two things. One, we have to either acknowledge, if we take no action, it stays as it is tonight. We go forward, we can have more discussion. Again, the handle comes back to you in the, in the summer every year. The main thing right now is if you're going to change it for this year, someone has to make a motion. I, Stance is, I think we should leave it, but it's a little more. If you want to change it right now for this group, if not, you can direct me if you want more information, if you want, you know, whatever, we can pull this sort of data from other, you know, years ago. Again, we have to come up how many should be correct, you know, what is honors? I mean, and again, I'm just using a percent. I mean, what do you roughly want? We find a number over the last three years that would be about that, you know. Most of the kids well, that are um, ha that have the honors right now, are they all here or are they mixed? Like, are they all weighted grades added or are they not? They have weighted. I mean, I can't. Are you asking are there really single kids in it? Or? Right. Like, is it a mix or is it just all FHS students that have the honors? It's majority FHS students. I, I don't have a list of. 
Okay. But they're not all with the weighted grades that are in honor right now? It's going to be pretty close. I'm going into that. Well, what happens with it, if you go full time to get CO, you pretty much have to be a straight A student. If you recall when we talked, you could get a couple of classes and you could get B plus or whatever. The kids that go or stay here obviously have them easier. Not saying easy, but they're getting weighted grades. So that's, those are people who get over more point. And I guess just one more comment for, um, I guess, just with my experience on the board and as long as I've been here, this is not something that we entered into lightly. The weighted grades and the levels we are at has been pretty much better part of a year having meetings discussing this, looking at different schools, looking at grades, looking at students, looking at classes, what classes should we weigh, what classes don't we want to weigh, is this something that's good for the kids, is this something that's going to uh, incentivize kids to you know, choose some of those higher level classes you know, and reward them for doing that. I think that's important. I mean, if we just want to hand out stickers to everybody, you know, I don't think that's where we want to be. You know, we want to incent people to to achieve higher levels. And part of the waiting grading, that's that's what that was about, was an incentive for the kids to get the higher grades. So I think it's for one thing, it's too late. I think discussion is probably good to have on this, but I don't know if right now is the time to, to take much longer on this. But I'd be willing to look at it for next year. When would that be a good time to do that? Well, we will bring, um, I think it's in July, off to look, July or August, we bring the handbook back that has all this laid out. So, that's so I mean, from this point forward, looking at next year, we need to come up with, you know, is it staying the same? Is it changing? Is it whatever? So, I, I mean, if there's a group that wants to look at it, if you want me to get information, whatever, it is going to come back be in the handle. So I think that at that time, we have to have a direction that we feel, you know, the board wants. So, so get information, people want it, get information. Well, I think we have. I mean, pretty much most of the information here already is what... It's figuring out know, what the, I'm going to say, feeling of the board is, is, you know, as far as what we want to direct. Yeah. Honor or whatever. Again, it's not. That's what we need. The direction we need. Administration. Um, I agree with Terry. I um, it's late in the ball game. It's too close to graduation to be making a decision on that. We need more discussion. Uh, we can do that next year. I mean, it just too, it's too tight right now. It needs to be discussed. Yeah. If I may, um, for the three point nine, I think is the. GPA for most awards, in my opinion, is really hard to achieve. Like, I think I had an A minus in one class for just one quarter, and that dropped me down to a 3.9, and or 3.98, and that's already cutting it really close to that. And like you said, there was only, I think you said there's 15 kids in my grade that had an academic award, and even for ours, I think our requirement is 3.75 and that's only like a fifth of our class. I, In my opinion, I'd rather have half of our class graduate. I mean, I know that's a really hard number to achieve, to achieve but I'd rather have half of my class graduating with honors versus five kids or ten kids just because it is a really, I know everybody wants it to be this really high prestigious thing, like you have to work very hard to get it. And even with 3.8 or 3.75, it is still really hard to get sometimes. So I just think we don't have to say right now, but I think it's worth looking at for later on. But, but keep in mind, we can look at each class and vision that academic excellence, it does meet kids. We have kids that have 4.0, but don't have the attendance, don't have the community involvement, you know, on that. They can't get three points in academic um, excellence. So, you know, because that's, so I mean, we can look and I can actually see any grade you want. You know, at the end of this year, if we want any grade that we can look at, we can tell you how many kids it is. We can go back several years and tell you how many kids. So it's coming up with, again, what the will of the board is, what it means to graduate with honors. You know, just like what, you know. What's the highest GPA they get if they take the weighted grading system? 
is like a four point if they take all the way to grades class. If they take all the way to grades classes. Is that like four point two? It is very tough for students without going into grades to make it. You have to be a straight A person pretty much. You get four credits, four college credits at any level. Or a full year class. But this is graduating with honors. This isn't the academic excellence. So there's a, you know, there's different things we were talking about. You know, there's honor roll, academic excellence award, graduating with honors, right? So those are all different. Thing. So the academic award is different than graduating with honors because when you get to the point where you're graduating with honors, you have had the opportunity to take you know all those weighted grades classes that could push your GPA up to a 4.2. But I still think it's like really hard because I think you said you have to have all those perfect grades to be able to get that, and there's not a lot of kids. Even the really good students, a lot of them still have a few A minuses or like B or something. I just think it's very difficult to be able to do that. To be able to do that. I just think I'd definitely rather have more people than less. What is the direction for us, I guess? What do you need? I mean, we can put it on the Zoom meeting, you know, to have more discussion. But I, I need to know if you need more from from us, you know what I'm saying? Or if your guts, you know, hey, I know what I would do right now, then I don't need to do any work. That's a little more to leave it for now. If this is for next year, we'll put it on. But I need something, you know what I'm saying, to. I would say if we want to revisit it, I, I don't think it's, I guess I don't think it's fair if we're consistent with what we printed in our handbook last year. We need to be the same. And if we want to move forward in a different direction, that's fine. But it has to be consistent with how we're doing things. Was this ever, was it ever this before? 3.95. No. Never. Never. No, it was 4.0. It was 4.0. When? Didn't we do 4.0? How did we do 4.0? No, what happened is last, if you recall, last year we forgot to change it for him. It was at 4.0. It was at 4.0. But we never got to that because we didn't put it in the handbook, drop the ball. So we didn't, you know, hold the kids harm. So, but when we got thinking last year, and I brought it back to the handbook was getting revised, I said, you know, the more I think about it or we think about it, that didn't sit well because you could not have any error. And that's when we came back, Mr. Iverson and I, you know, calculated, like you said, you could have a, a four credits at a B. You have four credits at a B in your four years, you could still get that 3.95. Four kids. Yeah, college credits. So, you know, try and, so we did actually never have it. But that is what we decided at one point. We did decide at 4.0, so. And we've had it at 3.9 for how much? Just one year. Because so what happened is we're getting, and again, it depends on what the group wants to see. Is 22 out of 80 or something like that last year? Is that too right. high of a percent, or is it what we feel is right for graduating with honor? You know, it's kind of like right. getting into the National Honor, Minnesota Honor Society. What do you want the criteria to be? You know, not every kid gets in. So know, we decreased the criteria. We went from four to three point nine. Right. We decreased right. the criteria. Right. Yeah. Yeah. From what the board had approved, yes, but we yes. never held to that because we dropped the ball and did have that. Yeah. And it never was lower than three point nine ever. Yes. It used to be before we did grades. Point, uh, before we did grades, it was down at three seven five. Okay. And, you know, in that ballpark. Right.
I just wanted to be able to understand it all. Okay. So does, is this my, does this help or not? It does. I mean, I didn't realize the 0.5 in the weighted grades was at it. Okay. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. So the more we discuss it, the more I learn about it. But I mean, as far as moving on it now, it's, that's silly. We need to keep it where it's at for this well, year. I think we should have looked at it earlier, but I, the only thing I'm having a hard time with is it seems like stay here and we'll benefit you if you don't. I mean, in the end, they're graduating and they're going out and we want them to excel and we want to support them as they excel. So I think looking at like the 3.95, that is a little high if they are going to accomplish. Like they already did it. There's no. Yeah. Um, last section, discussion of possible action. Same thing, um, at the last board meeting, um, we took some actions, we took some actions tonight. Um, legislatively, I'm going to say they haven't taken a whole lot of action, <laughs> not I should say that. Things that not, you know, we, we could have possibly known where we stand, we, we don't break Um We did make motions last time, we did uh, approve the phone system as well as the computer purchases, iPad purchases. It is true we came in roughly seventy thousand, something like that, sixty-five thousand, you know, um, to the good there. Um, and I put it on because the question came up, are we going to revisit and, and look at something? And you know, like the fourth grade section or the Ojibwe class or the you know the variety of Spanish classes, right? And so I sent couple of my updates and no one responded with anything so they put it on there. I mean what is uh, the closure of Gilfrey going to do? I haven't heard anything from me so you know I don't know if that affects any kids or not you know families. So right now I guess I just put it on are we not looking at anything or we wait and see what the governor does you know um, let me um, see if the numbers fluctuate. Has the numbers changed at all since uh, it's not that I'm aware of it. Fourth one. Last one. Okay. So it would still be that 27, 27, 28 instead of 27, 28, 28. So I'm not asking, I just, I, I don't put it on the So I was still concerned about the Spanish section um, just because I did have parents contact me and, and students as well so and I know it's not fair to just choose one because we have other sections too that need to be addressed but um, can we have discussion about that we can do we, that's what we're having right now that's okay, what we're well at our last meeting I wanted to discuss the Spanish piece and Michelle said they'll have options and I'm just wondering what kind of options the students have because right now they only have Spanish one and Spanish two. So from there, what do they have for an option? What do they what do they do? Are they I believe there's always online choices, isn't there? Yeah, there's always online. It's not that really is their only option. You know, the college does not have a Spanish three. Right. Um, if we don't have it here, that is pretty much their only option. No different than any of the other classes. Again, not where I want to push kids, but I mean, you know, the Ojibwe. It could have sure my Ojibwe way through it online. I mean, not many history, I don't think, have, you know, when you've done that, but it's not offered. Um, and in any classes online, obviously, we're going to push them to stay here and they stop here, but if some kid set on that, obviously, if eight kids went and took that online, they, hindsight, say you should have offered it. We're going to But again, that's where I struggle with. We have, I don't know, in front of me, four, five classes that were in that similar boat. Yeah, those kids have taken initiative to, you know, come forward. Partially, um, yeah, they come forward. And will some other teachers, you know, maybe try to rouse some students if that's what it takes? I'm afraid to get that. And the same thing. So are the students aware that they can? Do this online. I mean, are they? I can't answer that. Yeah. 
answer that problem. I can't answer that question. Where is it online that they go through? It's not the school, it's outside, right? So it'd be an additional time as far as like... Well, they can do it during school time. But I mean, there's a multitude of places you can go online. I mean, it's just like you can take online via store. You can take a course, stay in this building and take it to the U of M. You know, so, I mean, we try pushing um, kids that they're going to take it online to go through it. So, um, they're going to start online because they're kind of a consortium we work with. Um, but we can't make them online. And we're looking, you know, like say we're working on some telepresence, trying to get that going, um, which may help down the road. You know, not only to take classes that we don't offer, but also to be able to offer some things um, other places can't keep our people. And that's all set up through Thane, right? If they choose to do an online option, then you can talk to Thane and he works with them to help set it up. Uh, I have a question about budget wise because I know we're still waiting to have another meeting regarding safety, right? So if, if we're looking at more dollars to be put into the school for safety issues, that's my concern. We're, for the most part, we're waiting to see. I think we're going to get some safety money. You know, that's been the top, of course. Everything we going to be vetoed now. I don't know. Yeah, you know, so that's been kind of the preface there. Um, we have had several safety meetings. We talked about addressing only the Chris and our my kids here. Um, we had a walkthrough that we're going to get some more information on, but until we find out, you know, A, what we want to come in, but what also, you know, if we're going to be getting the legislative you know, additional, um, as soon as we know, I think it's going to come up on our agenda to, uh, you know, there's something we want to do. Right. I guess my concern is because we don't know what the cost of those things are going to be yet because the discussion on safety hasn't been finalized in terms of what kind of things we would look at and the amount of money we know or that we will hopefully be getting, we don't know that. And so, you know, I, I guess that affects my um, decisions on what I would go for in terms of class sizes as well. If I could, back to the online, um, the problem with that that I have is that um, I, along with quite a few other people that I have talked to, have been strongly discouraged against taking online courses, and it's also um, a lot harder to take online courses because most people are better working in person with someone, and online you don't have that, plus it's also you can't, you don't always have the help you need. It's just what's written, and you can't always, you don't always have the option to ask questions. And is that the same GPA that they would get through those classes as well as here, or does that change if they're doing online classes? No, I'm going to be not get the way it correct. It's not taught by our instructor. If they take a college level, that's different. Well, no. You know, the flip side is when we, they're working on the schedule right now, um, it won't be too long that that will be done. We could actually look at those, like we said, even if they're, and I think it was the students interested or whatever, we said, we don't know if they all need to get in a certain number. You know, that's another piece of it, that soon once the schedule is set, it wouldn't be too hard to look at to see if there was even an hour, you know, that they all could get in, because that's not uncommon being registered at five get in. And I understand that. I just find it frustrating that our students want education in certain areas and we can't provide it. Well, I think that's the same for all the classes that we chose to not go with the shop classes and you know the other yeah, things that don't the get same. the higher numbers that are really really good for our students, but for us to be responsible moving forward, you know, making good financial decisions. It was easier when we talked about like astronomy, because I'm thinking like, <laughs> how many schools offer astronomy? I, I'm okay with that. But when you talk about Spanish and different shop classes and stuff, things that we should be able to provide, in my opinion, you know, life skills classes, like I just have a hard time just saying, oh, sorry. Well, I don't you know that Spanish is a life skills class, so 
kind of I shop. I think Spanish or, is very you know, well, I, and I'm not just saying Spanish, sure. all of them, but I, I do feel that it's important. They're all important. I, I would say that uh, having Spanish online, there's classes that online would be significantly better for, and Spanish would not be one of them. Um, right. Not saying out of class it's only going to have six people back, but um, my daughter's taking an online class. Uh, she um, she got stuck and said, I don't know what to do, similar to what you said. And the first thing I asked her was, did you email the teacher? And she said, no. She emails the teacher, she gets the answer. So, um, and a lot of the future workforce is set up that way too, where you might not have that one-on-one, -on -one, where you're going to have to reach out and um, ask so many questions that you might not necessarily uh, know face to face. So, I mean, there's an upside and a downside. I think what it really comes down to is to run a class with hopefully eight kids, but more like six kids, you know, five kids after the schedule is done. And to me, it's a no, even though they're very passionate about it, hopefully that passion will carry them through this amount of classes. And my daughter did take online Spanish, and it was fine. She had an A in it. Does she speak Spanish? <laughs> no, <Mexico. laughs> yeah, I guess that'd be the real place. Yeah, just going back, the, the online, it, it takes it a takes right person. Not everyone is successful. And yeah. we can go back to, at one time, I think we had about 40% completion. Of course, not a lot of it was credit recovery. Kids that were struggling, you know, um, and the same what problem has come up. Kids that are, you know, dedicated say because they want something we will offer or an addition probably have a much higher you know completion rate. I agree certain classes are easier than others. You know, um, take the Calc online, the Spanish online, probably not as easy, probably compared to a you know um, personal finance or okay, you know, online side of class. And again it's not saying those are easy but there's something I, I think it'd be good to keep us abreast of what the numbers are. It'd be yeah. interesting to know what they are. I'd really like to stay up to date on that fourth grade number two. Because if we went say down, fourth grade, I think needs to be looked at as well. Yeah. If we went down one, and um, so that makes the decision, you know, a little easier than we made before. Um, but if it goes up and it even goes up five kids or three kids, yeah. it's going to be a big uh, game changer. So I think we should stay on top of those numbers over the summer. I don't think, I mean, I would make a motion to reinstate or add it, but it's not going to get passed. So um, I think if the numbers go up, we should definitely take another look at it. I will keep it out. I say, I'll give you now. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Administrative reports. Plus a page. Thank you. Kevin? 
Okay, um, no specific order here, um, just to keep you kind of in the loop. Um, we have had uh, an insurance committee meeting um, on a semi regular um, basis, and again, we have uh, over 331 representatives, we have 510 representatives, 4798 representatives looking at um, you know, potential of do we stick with people, do we look at something different? We're continuing to meet with the, the group. Um, there's several schools looking at the similar thing because it comes up in negotiations each time. That, and unfortunately, when it comes up at that point, we don't have enough time. So we committed to looking at that. So I just want to keep you in mind. Um, I think our next meeting now isn't until um, early August that they're actually going to have some numbers and we're going to have time to look. It would be for down the road, but at least when we're looking at it. Groups are committed to looking at it. I have no idea if we'll look, you know, go a different direction or stay where we're at, but we're going to bring it to, you know, not forever done, but we have time right now before the next round of negotiations to thoroughly look at it. So that's going on. We've also had a, a group um, of teachers as well as administration looking at um, the period of day at the school. And for the most part, we've gotten the last meeting, we're sticking this recommendation to stick with the seven period day, but look at not tweaking it get some type of an advising period in there. So we are meeting, we are looking, we just want to kind of in the loop on that um, and thank the different groups for working with us on that. Um, graduation again, I'm just uh, throwing it out there that we're, we're going to need a little help um, in doing a speech as well as some reading names as well as handing diplomas out in the past. So um, anyone knows not going to be here, I think this role, is that correct? Yeah. Is there anyone else that thinks they're not going to be at graduation? What's the date again? It's, it's the June, it's Sunday, June 3rd or June 3rd. Um, is there someone that would be interested, interested in reading half of the names? Just I'd like to tell them what I before and I'll do it. Okay, okay. Then I and I'll come to the, I'll come to the practice. Okay. Then I just make sure sure I'm going to make sure things are ironed out. Um, two other pieces to bring or to our issue. Um, one, just give me a heads up. We have gotten approximate renewals for property insurance as well, and work come. Um, both are going up um, fairly significantly. Um, the property insurance, and they're not set in stone. Um, the, um, they're looking at other possibilities, but with the fire in the arena is a big piece we're going to hit on. And I don't think that, personally, I don't think it's 100% acceptable because what's happened, and I think I've already been a little bit of a number now, um, they are not going to determine what the cause was. They put enough money into the investigation and they can't find the faulty you know, piece. So they're cutting their losses, which I understand, if, you know, um, from the insurance standpoint, that, you know, why put 200,000 in to figure out what costs something when you have you know 200,000 loss it doesn't make sense from our standpoint though i struggled a little bit i'm not saying it would be any different with any other company it, you know um we're getting hit a little bit they're looking at options but we're going to roughly 13 and a half thousand our insurance is going up about 20 percent we will go out we'll be on a cycle of next year i think it's our fifth year that's kind of what we've looked at Will it change any or not? I don't know. Our work comp is also going up. It's based on a mod factor, you know, of things happening. Um, it's in the same ballpark, 13, 14,000. Um, no matter what we have, it, you know, options there. Um, it's kind of late in the game we're going out. Um, but I just wanted to, unless you say we have to, Right there. Um, so it's not set in stone, but it's not going to be a good situation. I don't know what you need to get You know, a lot of times we go out, we might get a little reduction the first year or whatever, the end of business, you know, kind of deal. It's been good, um, you know, the renewals in the past. So right now, I guess we think we will stay, but we just need to know it's going to affect us a little bit. Maybe find some loss or whatnot. You know, different carrier, the things we drop a little bit, but ones you, um, in the loop there. And the other thing that has come up uh, again, I brought it to you last year and I'm going to bring it to you again um, to get our direction. Um, the calendar. It's that time of year again where we go out and start asking businesses for donations, send letters. 
are you going to get to do our current calendar? And, um, and I throw it out there because of kind of what is out there right now with some things in the community of getting, you know, a good online calendar place to go. I know a lot of people are used to having one to put on the fridge, and I understand. Um, the downside to it is, especially in the spring, it's not up to date very well. None of the spring sports are on it. Um, and I guess I think at some point, maybe I'm wrong, we're going to need to put our effort into doing an up-to-date online and getting people to just go and do you get some, what do you call it, pushback at first? Definitely. Again, we ask money, we get money from the community. You know, to put that out is great, thing, but I need direction from you. If last year you were set, you know, to keep it, are we still there? Are we... Are we what about, a, I mean, if we do go to online, I mean, just to make sure that we have an easily printable month by month for people that do want to do something like that. And what happens is the form we send it in is not the form that you would, you know what I'm saying, when you get it all is put in. I'm going to say in essence help because we have to send it in a different format to the printer. And so there is, you know, working time. But like for us, if we do, it on, if we do an online one just so that it pops up in a nice PDF where people won't have any issues on anything that no. And like you say, I know what the research and I say if it went. I mean, I think 30 years from now, I just turned out that it won't be still in the current account. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, we're going to get pushed back for the first year or second year, and you know, for some time. Um, what's that? I live out of I'm not ready to give up the paper calendar. I still have a paper planner. I'm old school. <laughs> Please don't. Um, is there a way that you could survey parents uh, at the high school and the elementary just to see how many people would have a real problem with not having a paper calendar? At some point during the year, is there a time that you're sending out stuff anyway that you could ask for anyone to get back to you if they were if, if they were thinking if we were going to go to an online, how they would feel? Any information? Anything's doable. I mean, between now and when we just all the answer, if we're going to do it, we need to get one. I don't mean for this year. I don't mean for next year. I mean, if we could survey now for the future. Because yeah, then a lot of people to survey on like big things. Yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> I think it might we can't get people to time. survey on like the bigger things, you yeah. know. So it's kind of hard to do something with the calendar, but. Yeah, I don't know. I just, is it, I mean, is it the cost, or why are you thinking? No, it is the effort. The, 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 okay. We have a secretary that spends, I'm not going to say half of summer, but a chunk of time, a good chunk of time doing that. And the tough part is, A, it's, it's you know, sending out the letters, you know, I don't want to say harassing the businesses that continually, you know, because it's a lot of times the same ones that give and give to get their advertisement. Um, and then it's taking and giving in the format for the printer that is just a lot of you know extra because we have an online calendar that you know most of the stuff's put into you know whether it's athletics whether it's stuff that's scheduled here um, to me the effort would be better marrying the two you know what I'm saying and giving you a good online yeah like it. well I, don't I, I agree with that but then I mean even at that do we need to send people I mean I know maybe it's tacky but do we need to send them a full glossy printed calendar with pictures can't you just make the calendar and send it out in the packets in the fall. You know, do people that, need, need yeah. the yeah. Would that need it suffice? Calendar? That would be One a, thing we should take into consideration is we just accepted the letter of resignation due to retirement of the person who put it out the last couple of years, too. So, I mean, well, we, I'm sure we'll find somebody new, but um, it's going to be a new learning curve for the person as well. Yeah. I guess I vote for printing one ourselves this year and see how it rolls. Can we just, I mean, well, no, make little well, calendars I mean, it's like not this. Be the same, you know, not well, no, you're not gonna have pictures, and it's not gonna be glossy. But I mean, it'll still be a calendar. I I vote with Michelle's idea. I really think that's a good. We're not idea. voting. I, I, we're not voting. I'm, I'm going along with Michelle. Michelle's. I disagree. It's a good yeah, idea. I agree. I mean, I just need direction for us as well as the department that kind of does that. That either continue on as it is, try something different. I'm going for trying something different. I mean, if we develop our online calendar that has printable templates and we send one out to everybody in the packets in the fall, 
And then if they want to go get an updated one later on, they can print out their own and rip out the old one and put the new one in. Can we do both for one year? Um, and maybe that year is not next year. Um, maybe it's a, little, a year maybe after or something like that. Professional but, version and the online one? And an online one and see the usage of the online. I mean, I would assume that it would take off pretty well. Um, we've seen the dive ball nice calendar, a lot of you know, use with it in just the last week. I, the only thing I, I could see is, I just know this from my store is that there's a lot of people, uh, the Google calendars are super simple, all you have to do is click add to your calendar. There's a lot of people who don't know how to do that um, or have the ability to figure it out. Uh, so, like a lot of people. So it, it, it's, it's super easy, but that doesn't mean that everybody's going to do it. You tell them. Well, we know somebody that does computer <laughs> Well, that would be helpful to just have a line up around the building and help people set up their calendars. Make a video. Yeah. Well, that's what they kind of did with Pi when they were having uploading. Uh, um, and we talked about that in a different group we were part of. Um, they had a fourth grader, fifth grader show how to um, do it. And then, he sh and then he said, and here's my little brother, and that was like a kindergartner or a first grader, and then he showed him how to do it. The tough part with doing it both, right now, we like say manually and then in the same area with different systems, both of work, we have different calendars, facility calendar, we have the activities, um, our school calendar, and we're going to have to put time and effort into getting them into whether it's a single Google because we need our school for the um, other schools that we work with. Um, if we're going to do both, it's actually doing more work. Oh yeah, no, I get that. And yeah. that's the only problem I have with what you're saying, we're losing it. Right now, we're going to try down the road. I don't think that this year might not. Why not just update everything like in August or September and then send out that month and then kind of like the lunch menus go out, just send the full calendar sheet home, one paper? Well, some people like to look at it and plan. Yeah, I mean, and then plan from September to December and then December to January to planning a trip to like I'm a planner too, I would love to. Are we not? Let me ask this question. Are we not doing the printing? You know, the meaning the, the fancy. fancy. Yeah, let's not do that one. Okay. I will take and see where we can get that. Getting a um, online with a printable version and see what we can do with that. There are, you know, we'll go. Okay. Good. Yeah. I'd also uh, just to add, sorry to keep on beating this dead horse, but I'd also just have Mike take a look at how the calendar, Mike Lucy take a look at how the calendar is being done now because it seems uh, it seems weird. We're transposing it a couple different times to get a final product when I mean, computers exist. Are you volunteering to help out? <laughs> I might want to get some help with that. Be happy to help, but I mean that's my well, there you job. Go. So, go Solution. I don't think school board is members are allowed to do that. That's your lessons, right? There's, there's, there's some rules on it. <laughs> that is all I have for my report. Okay. Uh, Ella. So since the overall student council has put on a very successful blood drive with 30 participants that filled up our rosters, and that was with walk-ins as well. We had our 2018 spring sports week with two great pet fests. 
Gina Oren led us in having a walk for water where we walked three miles and raised around $700. The academic awards banquet was a blast and something we hope to do for many more years to come, but we were disappointed in how few people got an academic award because of the GP requirement. Last week we held our elections for the new exec board and our new members. And during the summer we have planned a highway cleanup along with another blood drive. Thank you. Any committee reports? I have one for the rec committee. We um, the last board meeting that we had was pretty uneventful. Other than we, um, um, I guess I don't know the right term. Ashley Hall is now a rec board member, whatever the right terminology at large. is. Yeah. Uh, at large, and um, then we had a special meeting in between our last school board meeting and this one that allowed uh, sixth graders, and we were debating this anyways, that I brought up uh, sixth graders in certain sports that weren't offered by the rec department were able to participate in seventh and eighth grade sports. Um, and it was, the motion was approved with uh, the contingency we review it every year to make sure it's operating the way we intended it to. So those are the two things that really happened. Anything else? The only other thing I would add is just everyone is invited for cake and water um, to celebrate the continuing contract. Good boys. I would teach this one, but really tenure. All right, a motion for adjournment. I'll make that motion. Uh, six, 14. Second. All favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried.